Hey guys, welcome back to the garage today. We're going to try and get the fuel gauge working on Dale the truck. Stay tuned. Guys, today's video is actually sponsored by TMR Customs. Uh, we'll have more on them towards the end of the video. So if you guys remember from the last episode, I'm going to put that right here where we learned a valuable lesson on fuel gauges and how much fuel gets you to where you need to be. Uh, we found out that mounting the Phytech fuel pump in the rear of the tank has proven to be a little bit of an issue with uh, when you put, on the, put your foot on the brake, when you're low on fuel, all that gas uh, rushes to the front of the tank away from the pickup uh, and it will stall. So we don't know at what level of fuel that happens because, well, the gas gauge isn't working. Today we're going to try and fix that, hopefully without having to drop the tank again. Hopefully. Anyways, let's get to it. Now as you can see, there's not a lot of room to get up in there. And what I've been trying to do is get my hand up in here and reaching the wires, but there's too many bends in my I don't have a second elbow on that arm. Oh goodness. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, jack up the passenger side of the truck so that I can at least get under there and we're gonna start loosening those bolts on the saddle straps in hopes that I can tip that tank enough that I can get my hand over top from the inside and simply reconnect them. It's, it should be that easy but guys uh, there's a reason why I started doing YouTube and one of them is is because things are never that easy Anyway, let's uh, see if we can get the truck jacked up and put back together So this is our ground strap right there and that's fairly tight now one thing I did do when I grounded it Was I daisy chained that onto the actual new fuel pump? This wire here, this dirty one, this is the sending unit, which we've got to uh, plug in. There is some slack there, so I think the idea is if we can push that in a little bit further, then we might be able to come up above the frame here, grab a hold of it, and plug it in. So let's see if we can get the camera set up so you guys can see what I'm doing, and we'll go from there. So close. I'm literally half a fingernail away from making it work. I just can't get my hand up in there. Gotta be a different way to do this. Oh, I think I got her. Oh. Ugh. <coughs> Ooh, a little lightheaded. We might have got it. We've got the little plunger part, the sending unit, uh, connected on the stud. Uh, I'm hoping that the daisy chain ground that I did to the fuel pump is going to be sufficient enough to ground it out. Let's turn the key and see if uh, see how she's reading. I think we got her before it would pin itself all the way over to the right, almost pointing horizontally. And now she's floating right up to the uh, right up to the full mark. So for now guys, we're gonna call that a win. And uh, we'll see how long that lasts. I'll know once I get the truck down as well, sitting level, uh, that it's gonna be a little more accurate. Of course, we just filled it up before we pulled it in the garage anyway. If that works, we're gonna take it for a little drive and see uh, how much gas we're gonna burn over say, you know, 25, 30 miles and come back and if the gas gauge starts going down a little bit, well, we know we got it. So uh, that's gonna be next. Let's, uh, let's hit the road for the second drive with no stalling and just see what kind of power she's got. Okay, so we got the truck backed out. We've got the uh, fuel gauge is working 
and I, at least I think it is, it's showing that it's full. We'll find out when we go on this little trip. Uh, I did a, an IAC relearn once again, because I did find a vacuum leak while I was tidying things up under the hood. Uh, I just blocked it off for now, but that is the vacuum for the uh, overdrive uh, control switch. So I've got to uh, stop off at Napa, I'm going to grab a T, we'll get that plugged in, and then we'll go for our drive. Maybe we'll even check the fuel economy, see what kind of miles per gallon this thing's getting now. Uh, we're not going to come on it hard, we're just going to take it for a little trip. Uh, maybe we'll put about uh, 30, 40 miles on it. We'll go back to the gas station, top up, see how much fuel it took, and do our calculation from there. Anyways, uh, off to Napa, we'll get that vacuum tee, get it hooked up, and then we're off to the races. And for the record, we're coming up upon the first stop sign. It's not stalling. Of course, now there's plenty of fuel in there, but, I mean, not that I had any doubts. I had no doubts last time either, but hey, it is what it is. So I guess a couple of things that we want to try and figure out today is A, is the overdrive actually working? B, does it perform the same as a carburetor or better, more efficient, which we know it does, but we'll try a few practice uh, passing gears and you know passing some vehicles, getting up onto the on-ramp, all that sort of thing. And at the end of the day, when we come back for our drive, we'll stop at the fuel, uh, at the gas station, and we'll top it up, and we'll do a quick calculation on how good or bad uh, the fuel economy is on this truck because, I mean, at the end of the day, it was only getting about 14.1 or two, I think, before uh, on the highway, just, you know, cruising down the road on a highway trip. I was afraid to, you know, pass a gas station because I didn't know when the next time I was gonna be able to fuel up. No stalling, imagine that. Anyways, we're just getting ready to hit the highway here. So let's see how she does, merging into traffic. traffic today but it is a nice day for a drive. So one thing I will say today it is very very windy you can probably hear it seeping in all the door channels here but it is what it is square body truck I'll just have to talk a little louder that might work against us when it comes to fuel mileage yeah that wind is pushing us all over the place The overdrive does work, it's kicked in. We're only idling at about 2100 RPM. And uh, I got the speedometer at 80 miles an hour, so she'll, uh, she should be doing a lot better as far as fuel economy. Not sure why it's idling a little bit less. Now we are coming up upon this uh, Chevy Sonic. I'm not sure that we'll be able to pass it. I mean, it's a Sonic. Super Sonic. Anyways, let's kick her down. Go for a fly. Man, I love the sound of this truck. Anyways, we'll catch up with you guys here in a few minutes. So one thing I do want to make note of is that my cheap Amazon tachometer does not read as accurately as the Vitec system does. They're both tapped into the same source on the HEI distributor, but the Amazon one is reading about 28, 2900 RPM, and the Vitec is reading right around 2100 at uh, almost 80 miles an hour. So that 700R4 is working great. It's just idling along, and there's no doubt that this thing should be running more fuel efficient and be a lot better on fuel. So it just goes to show you guys, quality is basically worth what you pay for something. You want to spend $29.95 on a tachometer, 
you're going to get a tachometer that shows you 29.95. I always thought this thing was running, like, turning over so high uh, based on that. But it's not. Not at all. I mean, 2100 at 80 miles an hour, it can't beat it. I'm going to slow her down here to the actual speed limit, which is roughly about 70. And at 70, we're at about 1800, 1850. It's bound to be better on gas, guys. It's got to be. Well, guys, we're about ready to turn around uh, and head back to St. Stephen. We made it to St. George, which is uh, roughly about 20 miles. We'll turn around, do the trip again. We've burnt probably less than an eighth of a tank, which is great. Because uh, that does prove the theory that you know she's getting to be a little better on fuel So we're gonna turn it around head her back to town and we'll stop at the gas station and uh, just see exactly How much better on fuel this thing is gonna be in the meantime. I'm gonna get back to the country music So made it back to the gas station and we burnt more than an eighth of a tank that time because man oh man like we were driving into the wind so hard that I had a hard time keeping it at the speed limit let alone 80 mile an hour anyways we're gonna put some fuel in it we'll calculate the fuel mileage be right back so we got the fuel mileage calculated and it's not great um, it's only about 14.4 from what I calculated today and it wasn't over a great period of time or a great distance either so we're gonna to have to do it on a day it's not so windy. Um, we were driving hard into that uh, headwind and I'm sure that was affecting fuel economy and uh, we'll have to do it again. But a slight increase, nothing to, uh, nothing to write home about, but it is what it is. So uh, give us a few minutes, we'll get back to the shop and uh, we'll close out this video. So I'm browsing through Facebook the other day and I come across this ad for jack stand holders for your wall. The whole idea is to get the jack stands up off the floor. Well, that's exactly what they do. You can see them behind me. Um, so I reached out to TMR Customs, a Canadian company out of Ontario, and said, uh, I, you know, I'd love to have a set of those and feature them on my channel. Well, Tim, the president, actually emailed me back and said he'd love to. Uh, so he sent me a set and uh, I've got them installed here. Let's show you exactly what we did. These jack stand holders are so easy to install. All you gotta do is drill three pilot holes, find a stud, and lag them into the wall. Now we're ready to hang our jack stands. Let's see what it looks like. And would you look at that, now that we've got these things mounted up off the floor, I've got some extra space for my floor jack. So if you guys want a set of these TMR floor jack hangers for your wall, go right here to tmrcustoms.com and you can enter in Old Car Guy for 10% off your purchase. I hope you guys can go over there and support them as a Canadian company because they took a chance and supported me. Thank you so much to TMR for these wall hangers. We're gonna make use of them. In fact, I'm gonna order a couple more for the shop. Well, there you go, guys. We've got the gas gauge working in Old Dale, the truck with a little bit of finagling, some scrapes and bumps on your fingers and hands. We were able to get in there without lifting the box off or dropping that gas tank. I'm pretty excited about that because uh, as a one man show in this garage without the proper equipment, it's uh, kind of a pain in the butt uh, to do all that and get it back up into place and take the box off. And well, you know, you've seen me do it and I've needed, needed help. Um, so we've got that done. Took it for a cruise. Uh, anxious to see exactly what the fuel economy is going to be or the fuel savings because uh, on a windy day when you're fighting a headwind, you're not going to see much of a uh, increase in fuel economy. I do have to make another trip tomorrow to a buddy's place to help him out with something. So I may take the truck and calculate the fuel economy one more time. We'll put a few more miles on it this time. 
and uh, hopefully see a big improvement. The Car Guy and Six Fan Show is a collaborative effort between myself and Grant Tommy, who is straight six fan. I'm gonna put his link right up here. You guys go over and check out his channel as well because we co-host the Car Guy and Six Fan Show every other week. Last week it was on Grant's channel. This coming week it will be on mine where we have Alex Taylor as a guest on our show. So you're gonna to want to tune in for that. Don't forget, old Car Guy merch is available in the first link in the description box down below. You can get your Dale T. Focus T or Old Car Guy T. There's some hats and hoodies down there as well. Hope you guys can help support the channel in one more fashion other than just watching and commenting on these videos. If you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button and uh, make sure you like this video. Guys, stay focused on the windshield, not the rearview mirror. I love you, God bless. Let's do it again in the next video.